raising the IQ and bankrolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn. Bet. Win. Better IQ. Good afternoon and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast. Wrapping up the week, it's Friday. i uh, got a uh, decent slate of uh, NBA games and uh, try to get you some uh, thoughts and opinions here, some strong ones, uh, with our guest here for this afternoon, Mr. Aaron Renning. Let's welcome in. ER, how are you? Well, I'm doing okay, Andrew. A little bit, of, a lot of bit of a, a slump this week uh, in the NBA. Boy, it's been choppy up and down. It's, it's, it's interesting because throughout my career, uh, like post Valentine's Day, post All Star break is generally when I've been my best uh, at the NBA, and for whatever reason, the last two years just hasn't quite been that way. I kind of slumped uh, at this time last year as well. I just kind of pound my head against the wall. I mean, I, it seems like you know not that much is different, and the the bulk of games that I'm kind of looking at have generally done all right. Uh, just the ones. Kind of picking for my service, haven't gone well, just combination of some bad decisions, bad handicapping, and uh, some bad luck, uh, etc. So, um, yeah, looking to turn it around. Got a good slate here tonight, three service plays, so um, looking for that 3-0 and night. 3-0 and night, you can get on board with uh, Aaron, three plays for just uh, $20 at that uh, Buy Picks page at uh, BetterIQ.com. Be sure to check that out while we uh, we break down the games. We'll start first with the uh, ESPN uh, starter here, uh, Aaron, that being uh, Portland and Toronto. Uh, Raptors open five and a half, now five across the board offshore. Uh, no real movement, slight uh, half point toward the under, now 227 and a half. What do you got? Yeah, uh, the, the you know Blazers been uh, red hot here. Five straight wins, five straight covers. Started uh, pre All Star break with that big win against Golden State. Uh, followed that up here on a four game Eastern Conference road trip uh, with uh, wins against Brooklyn, Philadelphia, Cleveland, and Boston. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you, you could maybe make an argument uh, that you know they caught Golden State uh, without uh, paying much um, uh, attention. Uh, the day before the All-Star break when they played Philadelphia and Bede was unavailable. Uh, the other night they were catching Boston in a tough back-to-back after they had played Toronto. But with that said, this team continues to play at a, a very high level. It's a very together team. Uh, NS Cantor will not be available uh, for Portland in this contest tonight. Toronto uh, could do no wrong here as well. I believe 8-1 and one, uh, straight up. Uh, in February, uh, the lone loss when Kawhi did not play against Orlando uh, last Sunday. So uh, this one should uh, be a great game. Uh, I, I probably I'm, I'm just lean slightly here towards Portland. Uh, that's just been so together and, and so good. Um, you know, it just seems like five, maybe five and a half could be just a hair too much, but they've been really good here. I'm glad you used that word together, and I don't watch a whole lot of NBA, but I stumbled on that uh, Portland-Boston game the other day, and I guess in theory it's not hard to look together as a team when you're facing Boston, considering their uh, struggles, but that's the word that I thought of when I watched Portland play, that they're a very together uh, basketball team. I know that sounds cliche, but you know it's, it's true. They play good team basketball, and it's balanced, and uh, you know roles are defined, things like that. There's other teams out there in the NBA that are uh, you know, have those characteristics, but that's kind of the one thing that stood out to me uh, when uh, watching that game as uh, Portland ended up beating the Celtics 97-92. Uh, Aaron, let's skip down to uh, Charlotte. They're in Brooklyn. Brooklyn opened three, now two and a half, 229 and a half the total. Yeah, good matchup. These two teams met last weekend when Brooklyn got a win late in that game. Uh, Charlotte was not happy with the refereeing. Uh, in that contest, it's interesting. I always say Eastern Conference good, and here you have a Charlotte team that uh, is on the cusp uh, of uh, being a playoff team in the Eastern Conference. In fact, right now tied uh, with Orlando for that eighth spot uh, in the Eastern Conference. But as I mentioned, Eastern Conference good when you're fighting for that ace playoff spot generally means you're just not that good. And right now, Charlotte has lost five of their last six games while making this playoff run, uh, and they failed to cover uh, five of those six games as well. The schedule hasn't been easy, uh, but come on. Uh, you got to play a little bit better 
than this. So interesting to see what they will bring to the table here. I thought Brooklyn favored by two and a half uh, was uh, just a little bit rich in this game. Uh, the good news here for the Nets, they do get Spencer Dinwiddie back in the fold. But, you know, interesting how it's going to play out at this guard position because all of a sudden uh, that backcourt with ball handlers is full. Uh, as we know, uh, Russell's played so well so far this season, uh, but recently Levert has been back uh, in action, hasn't really played that well. Um, and, of course, Dinwiddie uh, back in the fold after that uh, bad thumb injury for him uh, as well. Uh, we've seen with so many other teams, and, of course, uh, the backup point guard, Shabazz Napier, has come in and played pretty well, 22 points for him. Uh, the other night, so we'll see how it kind of all sorts out here uh, for the uh, for Brooklyn. Boy, I bet them the other night. Just uh, again, just kind of so frustrating. I mean, Brooklyn to me, uh, you know, one of the better organizations right now in the NBA from the top on down. They're well coached. Uh, you know, always reading about how they're throwing these funky defenses at teams, and uh, they just did not have it the other night. One of their worst performances of the season. They fully admitted it. Uh, getting beat by Washington by nine, but it was much worse than that. They were down by 24, 28 uh, in that contest. I would expect uh, them to come back with a very focused and good effort here uh, tonight against Charlotte. A little bit cheaper price now uh, at two and a half, Andrew. Speaking of uh, Boston, four straight losses, Aaron, three of which I guess in, I don't know, theory explainable on the road against Milwaukee. Milwaukee, the best team in the Eastern Conference uh, currently on the uh, road against uh, Toronto. The aforementioned uh, loss uh, to uh, Portland, but sprinkled in there was a 10-point loss to the uh, Bulls. Nevertheless, you had them up. Four straight losses. Now they're laying doubles here uh, against those uh, Washington Wizards. Total's really been played up high, Aaron, 231.5 up to 234.5. Yeah, you know, the schedule's been tough, and, you know, losing to Milwaukee by one, not that big of a deal. Uh, The loss against Chicago. Chicago's actually playing pretty good basketball uh, right now. Uh, Inexcusable to a certain degree, but the Bulls have played uh, very well here in February. Obviously, Toronto and Portland are playing top-notch. You know, a tough back-to-back for them against Portland. I thought Boston actually played pretty well in that game. Uh, as uh, Coach Steven said, and I kind of agree, they just missed shots uh, in that game. But if they bring that sort of effort here, uh, I think they'll be on much better footing against a Washington uh, team that, again, came out of nowhere uh, with that win against Brooklyn the other night. But they had dropped four straight. You know, this team is still talking uh, about making a run here in the Eastern Conference playoffs right now, 25-36 and 36 straight up, uh, three games in back of that Orlando-Charlotte uh, uh, tandem, boy, I, just hard to uh, figure that's uh, the case here uh, with this Washington team. But um, we'll see how it plays out. I feel like Boston will come in with a pretty good performance. Wouldn't be surprised if if they get a nice cover uh, here tonight. Uh, meanwhile, Washington right now, I believe, uh, 10 straight games over the total. They've lost the bulk of them. Uh, the defense has just not been good. Uh, for this team. Boy, this total played really hard uh, over the total. I do uh, certainly agree with that move here. Clippers in uh, Sacramento. Sacramento off a uh, wild one, what, two nights ago, one of the more entertaining games of the uh, NBA season, a one-point overtime uh, loss to a very good uh, Milwaukee team. But more importantly, and Aaron, you've talked about it, the Kings uh, get the uh, point spread uh, cover. And also interesting, looking ahead, you've talked about it, Aaron, that you know Sacramento not having their first-round draft pick all in to uh, make the uh, playoff push. This next two weeks, two-plus weeks, obviously very important. They play the Clippers, then they play seven straight games against that Eastern Conference. So if you're the Kings, if you're going to make a move or at least maintain course, uh, like I said, this next two weeks is going to be uh, very critical. Uh, taking money here, two and a half up to as high as four, a couple of three and a halves, Aaron, 237 and a half the total. You know, probably the biggest game of the year for the Sacramento Kings. Um Right now, they are in the ninth spot in the Western Conference. Two games in back of the Clippers and San Antonio, obviously matched up against the Clippers. Uh, They're off those back-to-back losses. The the Clippers have had their number so far this year. The Clippers 3-0 against Sacramento so far this season. So uh, this is a huge game. This is a team that's uh, dropped four of their last five games, still playing pretty good basketball, fought back valiantly. 
uh, in that game against the Bucks the other night just to come up short. So uh, this is a huge game. The market has dictated uh, that if they're bet up to four uh, in some key uh, locales here. Clippers have been kind of an interesting team, a little bit tough uh, to figure out. They've covered actually four of their last uh, five games, still talking about wanting to make the playoffs here in the Western Conference. So uh, interesting to see how it plays out. Boy, it was interesting line move the other night uh, with the Sacramento Kings against the Bucks uh, in a key shop. Uh, boy, that over just got blasted and blasted, uh, uh, even up right up at game time. So interesting how this total is going to be bet uh, here tonight with the Clippers Sacramento. But uh, we'll see if any more over money comes in. But I would lean... Uh, a little bit under the total uh, in this matchup here tonight. Last game, Aaron, uh, Milwaukee there in L.A. taking on the Lakers. Lakers finally get a victory uh, against the uh, New Orleans uh, Pelicans. Is uh, Anthony Davis, uh, he was scoring at will, but they only played him 21 uh, minutes per uh, New Orleans kind of philosophy uh, with uh, him. But the uh, Lakers get, what, a five, six-point uh, victory. Here are their catching points at home, Aaron. Uh, catching as many as five, four and a half in a couple of uh, shops. Uh, 240 the uh, total, about a four-point move toward the over. Yeah, obviously great matchup, huge game here for the Lakers once again tonight. They're all big uh, for this team trying to make a pitch uh, for the playoffs here. Three games in back of the Clippers, uh, so this one becomes huge uh, for the Lakers. Interesting schedule. they got to go to play Phoenix tomorrow before a big game coming up against the Clippers uh, as well. Now keep an eye on Antetokounmpo, Giannis Antetokounmpo here for the Bucs. Uh, a little bit banged up with that knee. Uh, Andrew, he's probable, uh, expected to play, but uh, he was really limited uh, from a minutes perspective the other night uh, in that overtime win against Sacramento. He played just 24 minutes, um, uh, so he didn't really play much in the overtime as well. Uh, interesting, he just never seemed to uh, completely get on track as well. A plus-minus ratio of minus 24 when Giannis was on the court the other night, 24 minutes. And in those 24 minutes, again, they were minus 24 points. So uh, interesting to see how it's going to play out here uh, for the Bucks moving forward. But again, I, I mentioned it. I love that move of picking up Mirotic uh, from New Orleans. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he's kind of the backup for Giannis right now. He played 27 minutes the other night. Uh, his plus-minus ratio, plus 18, uh, hit a bunch of key shots, including a bunch of three-pointers. So. Uh, see how it works out for a Bucks team that continues to win six straight wins uh, for the Bucks uh, right now. Meanwhile, the Lakers hard to figure out this team, to be quite honest. Um, a couple of bad losses, obviously, to New Orleans and Memphis, even the other night uh, against the Pelicans. Uh, they win by six, but it wasn't a comfortable win and they didn't look all that good doing it. So, uh, boy, great matchup here tonight. The defense here for the Lakers have been highly questionable. Uh, how they're going to hold this Bucks offense down. Boy, it's going to be fascinating. Uh, good nightcap here on ESPN. Yeah, great stuff here from uh, Aaron Renning. As I mentioned, he has three plays going for tonight's card. You can get all three for the price of one. Just 20 bucks. Three plays, 20 bucks. Uh, purchase online at uh, Better IQ. Click on the uh, Buy Picks page, and you'll be good to go with, again, three selections, just $20, courtesy of uh, Aaron Rennie. All right, that'll wrap up uh, today's uh, show. Thanks for listening this uh, week, and the uh, podcast will be back again on Monday.